Today is day 17 of our hunker down 2020 on account of the COVID thing that's going around. And we had to do something a little bit different today just for a change of pace. We are at the east trailhead of the Splinter Hill Tract and we're going for a little stroll in there. Here we go. Do a little panoramic view This is a little woods road that's kept somewhat maintained. <clears throat> Charlie wanted to see where my ladder stand is at, and that's another job for another day coming out here and getting it. We made it to my ladder stand and those of you that were following along back in the fall during hunting season when I was beginning to make some videos of the little hunting trips if you'll recall, I showed you a, uh, a huge whitetail buck footprint. And that's what got me excited about setting up in this area to begin with. Well, nobody got him. On our little walk across that creek bottom down there, I saw where he had been walking back and forth. So that game is still on but for now Shirley and I we're gonna continue enjoying our pleasant little stroll out in the woods well we crossed that little wet bottom and mm, this is what happened oops <laughs> But we decided to go back a different way. There's a road, this, this property line road just keeps on going. And it's shady, it's breezy, it's beautiful. So we decided to follow this and see where it goes. David and I have this thing. When we see a trail, we want to follow it. It's just the way we are. So come along with us, see what we can discover up ahead. Shady, grassy, maybe snaky, probably not. It's cool today, about 64 degrees. The wind is gusting out of the north. Right now we are on the property line walking. There's where we came from. And <clears throat> just enjoying absolutely blue skies. There's not a cloud in the sky. Oh, wait, there's a cloud. What is that? And there's, there's David. Peace, he says. Peace. Be with you. All right, Captain, lead on.
to the left is where we have come from. If we, if we go that way, we will eventually arrive at the trail that takes you to the west parking lot. And it's a pretty good hike from here to there. And then here, we're going to take this trail and it's going to wind around and take us over there where the, the tall pines are. And at the tall pines, we'll pick up the road to go back to the car. We're really fortunate, y'all, to have access to something like this. This particular tract of land is a little better or around 1,300 acres. And it's, it's kind of a combination use area. It belongs to people like us that live here in Alabama. Forever Wild purchases tracts of land such as this cut over timberland and then leaves it untouched for what is the word perpetuity it'll never be developed and what they will do the extent of their involvement with this land is they they do the necessary uh, burns that need to be done in order to to keep the undesirable habitat from taking over and choking out the desirable habitat and at this point on properties such as this all of this is native southern longleaf pine that's growing back in on its own voluntarily none of it was planted the seed from the longleaf pine that was here long long ago before it was timbered out has laid in the ground waiting for an opportune time to germinate sprout come up and give back the qualities that God placed in the longleaf pine. Is that a longleaf pine there, that tall one? Those three standing there are longleaf pines. Okay. And if you look, I don't think you can see it on the GoPro, but the size of these pine cones, they're huge. They're huge. huge. And, and this one, that's not a really big one. Yeah. There's a big one. Look at that one. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. Okay. Compared to my muddy foot. Yeah, compared to your muddy foot and your wet pant leg where you... Uh, <laughs> fell in the creek. Fell in the creek. <laughs> Onward. The necessary burns in order to develop this uh, so that it returns to its most natural state and it takes a long time to do that but fire is an important aspect of that and it just so happens that not long ago The State Lands Division came in and did a controlled burn in that area. And even though the pines really look scorched and damaged, longleaf pines 
thrive on that sort of thing. And it's destroying the undesirable understory that would literally take over if the fire did not control it. 